Hello and welcome to a brand new Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. I'm sorry I've been a bit uh, slow with videos in the last couple of months, but hoping to make 2015 a really busy year. Make sure you check out my blog post over at danallenfilms.com if you want to see what I've been up to. So today we're taking a look at a really cool, slightly hidden feature of Final Cut Pro 10, which is the custom frame sizes. Now, in today's modern world, we're often creating video for different screen sizes and different platforms. Maybe it's for the web, or maybe it's for a mobile phone. What if we wanted to take a film, which is obviously shot in 16 by 9 this with anamorphic crops, and make it ready for portrait viewing in an iPhone 5, for example? Well, let's just go ahead, select these two clips, and copy them for now. Now let's focus on creating a new project. So we're going to file new project. And from here, we can now create a brand new timeline, which is going to have the dimensions that we want. Often you'll have video properties set based on first clip ticked by default. You want to go ahead and choose custom. And then from here, you can click on custom for the format, and then you can type in your own resolution. So we want to go for 640 by 1136, that's the iPhone 5 aspect ratio. Then we're going to choose 60p because the iPhone 5 will support it and if you have higher frame rate video then that will be useful. We can name this iPhone 5 version and then for sound we could customize the sound but the default settings look just fine for what we're looking to achieve. And then go ahead and press OK. Now suddenly you'll see what looks like the dimension of an iPhone 5 and that's because it very much is. From here we can now paste in those two files we copied, press Command V, and we're going to throw these down into the main timeline. I'm going to hide the roles. And now you can see that this is what happens when your phone's in portrait mode and you try to watch videos on Facebook for example. It's not optimal viewing. But what you can do is select a clip, click on the transform tool, and scale up the video and then you get to move it around and find the optimal area for what the shot is trying to convey and this is where you get to be a filmmaker all over again right you get to identify with this new frame with this new viewing experience what are you trying to show with each shot and how are you best going to show it again we're going to copy make this bigger and then we can scrub through and you can see that for the most part the character stays in shot However, you can then start playing around with this even more by, for instance, adding a pan. You've now got all this extra material to play for, or to play with rather. So what we could even do is add a slight movement from, say, here. We're going to add a keyframe, and then we're going to press the down key to skip to the last edit point, and then press the back arrow just to move to the prior frame, and then hit the keyframe button again, and then pan our footage over like this. And now when we play back, just like that. And now you can see that not only have we made video available for a custom frame size, notably the iPhone 5, we've actually started playing around with our footage, which was intended for a different form, and started to artistically play with it and work out how we can use the different aspect ratio to tell a slightly different story. For instance, here, by having all this room to pan, we are following the character's gaze. You can see he looks, starts looking forward and then looks over to the right. And then we see the character. We see what he sees using this new frame size. One other frame size that you might be interested in using is an anamorphic frame size. Now, if you notice in the previous project, you had these crop bars. So how do we get rid of these? Well, how about we go for a 2K size project? So we're going to go File, New Project. And following the same idea as last time, we're going to go custom for the format. And then we want to type in 2560 by 1080. And 24 frames a second sounds great because this is going to be more of a film format. And then project name, we're going to choose 2K anamorphic. If I could spell, default settings for sound sounds fine. Press OK. And now you can see we've got this really long viewer. And what we can do again is we can press Command V to paste in these two clips again, drag them down into the primary timeline, 
And you can see we've got this all this space at the end. Now what you want to do is scale up the first clip and it will snap to the edges. Then we can press done and if we press command C to copy that clip and then we select the second clip and we press command shift V now we can actually paste some attributes over so what we want to do is paste the transformation and then if we press paste you can see that there are suddenly no black bars on the side of this footage and then just like that if we press play we've now got 2k anamorphic widescreen footage playing using the custom frame size feature in Final Cut Pro 10 so hopefully this was useful have a think about different frame sizes you can use all the different platforms you can start uh, building your films for and maybe even think about stuff like what if you had four television screens you might want to create uh, a really big piece of video that you can then import into After Effects for example and cut up and prepare to be projected onto the four different TVs to play simultaneously all these different complex things you can do starting off using this custom frame size feature so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon